Hello, and welcome to the virtual open house of the Kentucky Geological Survey. My name is Kina Lugutkin, and I'm a geologist at the Energy and All section of KGS. In the next few minutes, I will talk a little bit about what rare elements are and what they are good for by providing a few examples of uh, objects that you are likely familiar with, but you may not know that rare elements are critical components in them. You have probably seen this chart, which is called the Critic um, Table of Elements. And this table is structured in a way that it shows periodic trends in the properties of lemons. You may have noticed that there is a strange jump uh, from 57 for lanthanum to 72 for hafnium, and then there's another change uh, jump here at actinium. And then we have these two additional rows here um, just below the table, somewhat out of place. I'm only going to talk about the elements that are highlighted in this greenish color because these are the rare earth elements. These elements are grouped together and also include scandium and yttrium because they have very similar properties and they also typically occur together in uh, mineral deposits. You may have wondered why these elements are called rare earths. First of all, they are actually not that rare, but when they were first discovered in the 18th century, they were thought to occur in low abundances. Secondly, they were first identified in the form of oxides which were called Earths at the time because of their earthy appearance. In mineral deposits, um, however, the, the minerals that contain large concentrations of rare elements typically occur um, together with igneous rocks that originated from magma deep in the subsurface. Monazite, for example, is a phosphate mineral that may contain a variety of rare elements, but the most common is cerium. And then basmazite is a carbonate fluoride, and it uh, contains uh, cerium, lanthanum, or yttrium. Xenotime is uh, another important uh, rare earth mineral, and the major component in it is yttrium. In the Commonwealth, you can find um, rare earth bearing deposits in the Western Kentucky Flores Bar District. This is actually a very interesting mineral district. Here, not only the igneous rocks, but also the fluorite contains rare earth elements. It is actually the subject of active research that is sponsored by the United States Geological Survey to find out how exactly these minerals formed and um, why there are some differences in the abundances of rare elements within the district, even though it is believed that the mineralizing processes were the same or at least similar in this area. If you like beautiful minerals and want to learn more about fluorite or the history of the Flores Bar District, I encourage you to take a trip to Marion in Christendom and visit the Clement Mineral Museum. They have gorgeous minerals on display, such as these uh, in the picture here. Now that we have seen uh, what rare elements are, let's take a look at what they're used for. The majority of rare elements are used in uh, catalysts in the, U in the US. Um, and they are made for vehicle exhaust systems to control air pollution. Another common application is uh, as polishing agents. Cerium oxide, for example, is used to polish glass, granite, marble, and gemstones. And then metallurgy and ceramics um, use rare elements to create materials with special properties. In the next couple of minutes, I will highlight a few interesting applications of rare elements. Clean energy production is a very important um, topic these days because we try to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases that most of them are generated from burning fossil fuels like oil, natural gas, and coal. One way to produce um, clean energy is to use wind turbines to generate electricity. Neodymium is the rare earth element that is used to create the most powerful magnets in the world, such as these here in the picture. The basic principle is that the more powerful the magnet, the more efficient it is to generate electricity. The way it works is that the wind spins the blades, which then spins um, the rotor and the shaft, and that in turn spins the magnets in the, in the generator inside um, stationary copper coils, thus um, inducing current. The current is then um, adjusted for voltage and frequency and it is sent off into the grid system. 
another essential application of rare earth elements is in national defense. Nitrogen globules, for example, are made using lanthanum. Neodymium is used in laser rangefinders. And precision guided weapons are made using samarium and other rare earth elements. In addition, radars, sonars, and communication devices are also made using rare earth elements. Speaking of communication devices, Apple is now using recycled Earth elements in, their, in the Taptic engine of the latest models of their iPhones and watches. What the Taptic engine does is that it sends subtle vibrations in response to interactions with the screen. So the next time that you're playing a game on your phone and you have these little buzzes, um, then just think about that um, Rare Earth elements are working in your hands. I hope you enjoy this little introduction into rare elements and it piques your interest to learn more about them. Thanks for watching.